Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. What's going on, everyone? Welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code Bear Bets. That's the code Bear Bets, two words for new customers, to get $200 in bonus bets. The NFL, what week are we at here now? Seven? Eight? Uh, seven. Yeah. But yeah, it's one, yeah, one short of college. College week eight. NFL Week 7, I'm the Bear. That's Jeff, Will Hill, and uh, John Murray from the Superbook will join us shortly uh, to kick around uh, a week where we've got a quite a few games yeah. that set a theme that maybe potentially could be Super Bowl kind of preview-ish. Maybe. But, maybe, but maybe, Bear, maybe. before we get going here, for those who are watching on YouTube— we have some decorations in our studio right very now. Very Mardi Gras. Very Mardi Gras for the for the New Orleans Super Bowl that we, we'll we will be down be there, there for I think all most week. likely yeah, exactly. for, for the Super Bowl. But it's our hundredth episode today. Wow. I thought yesterday was. It is actually today, I believe. I've been informed in the in the old ear that uh, that the taste day we made it a hundred episodes. It doesn't feel like a hundred, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, it's funny because I was saying this to my, my wife earlier. They go, oh, "It's a hundred episodes." Because we, we, she heard the yeah. yesterday, and she the, listens. You think about it, well, she listened because I was just recording, and she was upstairs at the time. <laughs> but uh, don't 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 think don't think she's downloading this and listening for sure. But and, and I think I'm like, yeah, you know what? Like between the the playoff episodes that we had uh, leading up to the Super Bowl last year, NCAA tournament, uh, Triple Crown, like, the Euros, Euro, the summer, Euro, the Euros, the exactly, yeah. Yeah, Euros and Copa. Yeah, it's, they they all add up. I can't wait for the soccer game this summer. I'm gonna be so dialed in. I'm gonna start preparing so soon. You better I be. Wait. I can't wait. Uh, no, 100 episodes. It's fantastic. Well, next, the, two years is what you need to be dialed in for. World Cup. World Cup. Yeah, that's what you need to be. Where, where is it at? All over United States, Mexico, Canada. Oh yeah, the, the North America World Cup. Yes. Okay. Maybe I should go to a game. That'd be fun. You should go to a game. Yeah. Be great. Be. It's, it's awesome. But thank you, the listeners. Though we made 100 no, episodes. We have made yeah. 100 episodes, and uh, yeah, we we appreciate it. It's been. Uh, a lot of fun. We're growing, uh, having a lot more fun, doing things bigger, better, and uh, hopefully we can uh, continue. Ca- it's amazing. Like I've been so much better in the NFL this year than I have in college. I don't know why. It, it, it's like what, whatever. Like it, it, by what, however, I, I've been handicapping the game. Yeah. I kind of handicapping the same way both sports and just NFL. NFL, it's working. In college, it's not. It depends on the week. I'm I'm pretty much. Last week was bad for both, but I've had most weekends where like one good college, one bad NFL, flip-flopping back and forth. I've had some bad beats in the NFL, though. I've not had that in college. NFL has been... The NFL, and I feel like now, Bear, after last weekend, where these the Florida, the public favorites started winning again, and the bad teams looked bad, right? Carolina looked bad. New England looked bad. Jacksonville looked bad. I mean, Denver, if they're bad, I don't know. You know, but like they, they didn't look terribly. The Browns covered but lost in, in really ugly way. Um is are we now to the point where the Raiders, by the way, too, got blown up by the Steelers. Are we at the point of the season now where we can now handicap games based off of the teams being bad again? It doesn't mean you you take right. the favorite outright, like the 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 commander is getting nine points or laying nine points against the Panthers, but for the first five weeks of the season. All these teams we thought were battle covered these games bare. And now they didn't last weekend. Does that change the way you handicap now the rest of the season? I, I think you certainly have a better idea as the year goes on now that these teams are, are not going to be threatening for a, a, a playoff spot. And once the tread deadline pass, we'll, we'll see. And then, um, yeah, it's kind of jockeying for uh, for draft position, which right now I believe the uh, the Cleveland Browns would hold the number one pick in the NFL draft. So Joe Sanders for the Browns. Yeah, like Dion will ever let that happen. He doesn't have a choice. 
You go, he'll, he'll pull, a, pull a little John Elway? It just, I mean, then instead of won't play in the NFL. Okay. Well, I mean, that's his well, choice. He's got all his NIL money, so he'll be... Uh, yeah, the money's not the problem. The problem is he won't play in the NFL. Okay. Well, maybe play in the UFL. That'd be great for us. Would be great for us. Yeah, it'd be great to see Tiana uh, uh, Shadur in a UFL. <laughs> UFL, CFL legend I, Shadur Sanders. I think people, by the way, this is not the, the podcast before this, people have to come to the realization that Shadur will be the first pick in the draft. I think, I think people don't really realize like he, how well he's playing. Mm -hmm. And I've made this point many times that if he was on Texas or Georgia or anywhere else, He'd be the he'd, Heisman favorite. He'd be the Heisman favorite, and he'd be consensus number one pick, no questions asked. But because he's at Colorado, With his dad, and, and his dad, and the offense is just not—it's not a great. It's great because Shadur is good. It's not a great offense in general. The offensive line's not really good. They don't run the football. They're stat, they're formationally are boring. Is that a Pat Shermer? But, uh, yeah, but like if he, <laughs> it's a Pat, yeah, yes, it's a Pat Shermer problem. <laughs> I think people are, like if you're a fan of an NFL team that we just talked about, right? The the the, the Panthers, the Browns, the Raiders. You're going to be drafting Shadur number one. He's going to be the first pick of the draft. And, and, and he probably should be. So, I, 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 I've seen that. I've, I've seen Shadur one, Beck two, and then like Ewers three. Would be I, like I know the, a lot of it's the, projection. So, like, we're projecting Beck about what he'll be in the NFL or Ewers. Now, Ewers would be the guy that I think we'll see this weekend, obviously, catch up on our college podcast. Uh, they play Georgia. I just don't quite see it with those guys yet. I can see it with Sanders. Yeah, I, I can see it with Beck. Okay. I, I can see it with Beck, but I can definitely see it with Shadur. Uh, and, and I can definitely see it with two teams that certainly are not going to be in the running <laughs> for Shadur Sanders this year. Yeah. Uh, America's Game of the Week, Sunday, uh, rematch of the Super Bowl, rematch of the Super yeah. Bowl from a couple of years ago. Uh, arguably the, the two Super Bowl favorites again this year. Uh, Kansas City going to San Francisco. Uh, Niners, a uh, point, point and a half favorite, total around 47. Uh, we're going to kick this around at length in the, in the yeah. gambling group chat, but uh, you, you talked about like just knowing about certain teams. Yeah. Just college has been a college. We had a big week last week, big week this week. This feels like the a week in the NFL where between this game, uh, Ravens, Bucks, uh, Texans, Packers, there are a lot of really good games this week in the NFL, and this obviously is the headliner. Yeah, this will be a lot of fun on, on Sunday. Um, Chiefs off a of bye. We know Andy Reid's record off a of bye, but they're still missing some some key, you know, key, key components. Uh, the Niners, look, the revenge thing's interesting. I, I think I saw a quote from Trent Williams basically saying, like, it's, it's there's not no revenge. revenge. It's not revenge. He's it's like, not revenge. He's like, we, we, the game happened. It's, 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 it's in the it's past. It's the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, it's a regular season game I, and the Super Bowl. Like, the, you're not winning the Super Bowl if you win this game. The thing I will say about this as a longtime Chiefs fan and watch every game of theirs for the last 10 years is that these are the games that I do not bet against Kansas City. When, when they're playing the Saints on Monday Night Football, even though they covered that game, or they're in Atlanta, they're playing the Chargers, like, those games, that you don't get the Chiefs' full attention. Mm -hmm. This is a full attention game, right? Now, again, they're missing wide receivers, but so the, it's not like the Niners are healthy either in all their positions. This is a full attention Chiefs game off a of bye. And I just, if you bet the Niners, you, you must think they can overcome all those things we talked about with Kansas City, like the things that we know are good about them. Mm -hmm. That's my only thing. And, and, and again, like, when you're a team like Kansas City who's sort of not coast through the regular season bear, but it's interesting when when you watch um, the the videos from in the locker room after wins. Okay, after the Saints win, Andy Reid like no one even comes together in a circle. Andy Reid's like, "What well, you know? How about them Chiefs?" And he's like, "All right, guys, yeah. see, see you in a week." And Mahomes just goes, "All right, one, two, three, break." Mm -hmm. Like it's so routine for them. It and and then you watch the Lions and the Bucks. And they have these like giant celebrations, right? Which is what it should awesome be. Awesome are the freaking Lions? It, it's great. Like that's what they should oh. be. Right? Like it's hard to win in the NFL. You should celebrate it. It's my favorite thing about the league that I miss is like the the, 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 the that that fifteen minutes of jubilation after a win. But so Kansas City is sort of just like go through the motions for a lot of times. But then in a game like this, they don't bear. Like this is the game where they give you the full effort, and that's why I think Kansas City wins. Um, but you know, if they lose, I mean, the Niners are a good football team too. Niners sole favorite to win the NFC, or do you think the Lions? Are close? Oh, man, the Hutch injury. Yeah, the Hutch injury is bad. Um, we'll talk about it in the gambling group chat uh, a little bit more. But the one thing I'll mention now is again, it's like there's no one for one replacement there, right? Now you can get by by hoping your interior guys play better mm -hmm. when they're playing good. By the way, they're not playing bad, but you know they they pick up the slack. 
You can try to get by by bringing pressure. Well, now if you bring pressure, you get one less defender to defend the pass. That's why rushing four, you hear that term. When you hear term getting home with, with four, four. pressure with four, that means seven guys are in coverage against five at the most wide receivers. Well, now if you have to bring five, that's one less to defend the pass. So that's where the trickle-down effect starts to happen. And I, I, I want to see what the Lions do because I don't know what they're going to do yet. I, I, I have an idea. I think they're going to have to bring pressure. Um, but we'll see what that looks like. Or they're going to have to out, you know, keep trying to outscore teams, which is might be what they do. But that leaves the margin for error in games much slimmer if the idea is we've got to outscore everybody. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that game at Minnesota, who the, who the third, second choice in the NFC Lions, third choice are the Vikings. Fourth choice still is somehow the Eagles at plus 750. And Ugh, um, gross. He, he, here's you can get the Eagles at plus 160 to miss the playoffs. Like, like I, I, is, that, is that possible? And, and then the Cowboys, on the other hand, are plus money to make the playoff. Like, like the Cowboys stink. Cowboys. Like, like, I, I don't see how the Cowboys are making the playoffs. The Cowboys are minus 235 to miss the playoffs. Like, how is that team making the playoffs? If the Eagles fired Sirianni today, I bet the Eagles would make the playoffs immediately. If he was like, if that he was enough. gone, yeah. Um, they haven't scored a first quarter point yet. Their head coach is arguing with fans after games. He, he they, they, looks so overmatched correct. without he, Steichen. He, he mentioned that he called a defensive play. He overruled Fangio and called a defensive play that, that didn't work. He he it, he's not he's not a good football coach. And I, I feel like if Kellen Moore were running um the I mean someone else, uh I I, I think it would be a better football team. Yeah, it, it, it is amazing because we'll kick. We'll talk about it in the, in the gambling group chat as well. Like using the Eagles and Survivor was just three, two and a half hours of absolute torture. You got home, buddy. To have to sit there and we're, we're, we're home, we're through. But hopefully, some other people will use the Eagles during the uh, the remainder of the season and, and suffer a uh, an unsimilar fate. On the other hand, you've got teams that. In the AFC, we're amongst the favorites in the AFC yeah. to make the playoffs before the the, the Jets, the Bengals. I don't want to make the playoffs, but maybe win, make the Super Bowl with the AFC. Yeah. Both are two and four. Both are plus money to make the playoffs. Uh, the Jets are plus one forty five to make the playoffs. Uh, the Bengals are plus one fifteen to make the playoffs. Of those two teams, which do you think is more likely to Bengals? Make the Bengals. Yeah, Bengals. Um, if they were four or two, Joe Burrow would be the leader for MVP. Mm-hmm, He's correct. incredible right now. He's playing really good. And you have to think <laughs> that defensively, when they get some of the the guys back, they're going to be better. Their defense coordinator has is, is done a good job the last three or four years. Like they just need their players back healthy. Um, I don't trust the Jets at all, Bear. Uh, I don't either. So that was a game they had to win. And I know on Will Monday. does. Will, Will Hill will yeah. make his case for the Jets later. Um, I, I just I didn't know what to make of the Jets before the season started. Uh, Devontae Adams thing does nothing for me. It doesn't make me feel any better about the Jets. Um, and I don't like how they Robert Sala was a scapegoat. I, I just don't like what they're doing right now. So uh, I would I would lean Bengals. Uh, but the, the, look, the top of the AFC is pretty simple, right? It's Kansas City. It's Baltimore. I think if they played right now, I, I think I'd take Baltimore to win. Baltimore would be favored to win that game. I'll put it like that in neutral field. Uh, Buffalo is if, you know, working through some injuries. Houston, Kansas City. I mean, it's pretty much the teams we thought at the top of the AFC. I mean, but to, to back that up for the, for the with the Bengals, you very easily could have beaten the Chiefs. You very easily could have beaten the Ravens. Your next three games are Browns, Eagles, Raiders, three games you probably should win. You still have the Cowboys on the schedule. You've got the Titans on the schedule. It feels like now is the time to bet the Bengals to, to make the playoffs. Uh, you, just because if you if you look at the AFC and, and you look at you look at the standings, it does feel like you're going to get like a nine and eight type team uh, in in the playoffs because you got the Steelers who are four and two, the, the Colts are three and three, the Broncos are three and three, the Dolphins don't have two up. Uh, like like it, it feels like a playoff spot is still there to be had for the Jets or the Bengals, and, and I with I'm with you. I think that ultimately. Uh, it would be the Bengals that, that I would wind up betting uh, yeah. to make the playoffs. But a group that you can always bet on, Jeff. It's professional. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Look at hey, hey, we didn't get to 100 episodes by, <laughs> by us just kind of screwing around here, not knowing what we're doing with the segues <laughs> and professionalism here. A group you always want to bet on. Myself, Jeff, Will Hill, John Murray, who's from the Superbook of the Gambling Group Chat. Enjoy. Back again, NFL Gambling Group Chat. Myself and Jeff joined, as always, by Will Hill and John Murray from the Superbook. Uh, 
tonight, Thursday night football, Denver at New Orleans has kind of a meh feel to it. Two, two rookie quarterbacks, Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler, uh, a ravaged Saints defense. But, John, do we think that the the Broncos offense with Bo Nix is the offense that's going to take advantage of a, a Saints defense that was absolutely uh, thrashed by Baker Mayfield and the Bucks last week? You know, we're looking at what, three three across the board now with the, uh, yeah. with the, with the horse? Uh, nothing mad about this game, Bear, if you bet Denver Broncos over five and a half wins. Like myself, for mm. example, I'm excited about this game. Talk <laughs> about getting lucky with a schedule spot. The Broncos are now a three-point favorite in New Orleans. We opened this game pick them on Sunday night, but they keep betting us Denver. And it quickly got us to Denver two and a half. Now at Denver minus three, even if Bo Nix can't take advantage of this defense, I don't know. I mean, it'll will it ever set up better for him than it will tonight against the Saints and and Denver's got a pretty good defense. I know they got pushed around by the Chargers on Sunday, but they're, they're pretty good defensively. It's hard to imagine Spencer Rattler doing much in this game. Total 37. It's low. Obviously, the people studying the numbers don't think there's going to be a lot of fireworks tonight at the Superdome. Who is playing exactly for the Saints on offense? Because no, no Olave doesn't sound like Shahid. I mean, they are down just about everybody now. No certain for Denver, and that's a big loss. So that was uh, that was something that really hurt Denver last week. I, boy, I, if you can get if you can get a three on the on the uh, the home dog, I, I don't know. Can you really lay three with Bo Nix? I don't think I'm going to be betting this game. Um, you know, I'm sure at two and a half people will see a low total in the two and a half and think that's an attractive teaser option. That makes sense to me. But uh, I will be watching a lot of the Mets trying to even the series on <laughs> FS1 tonight at two games apiece. I will not be watching much of this one there. That, that, that congratulations is- to John Murray, by the way. Tigers got eliminated. I think uh, I think he was at the Tigers funeral last week, so he can uh, you know, he can feed his dog. <laughs> dog that was a very big win for us, guys. I'm not going to lie. The, the I can tell you guys the risk room at the Westgate Sportsbook on Saturday. It was very quiet. I believe it was the fifth inning. Detroit was up 1-0. Yep. Scooble was getting the three guys out in about two to two and a half minutes every half inning. Like, if you got up to go to the bathroom, you missed all three people getting out. <laughs> he was just mowing them down. And then all of a sudden, Lane Thomas, former national, comes in, hits a grand slam, and the Indian, or the Guardians, pardon me, are on to the ALCS. Very good for us. And Detroit was leading in game seven of uh, game four. I know it's not a baseball podcast, but that was very close to uh, to sweat time. Was, we were thinking about you. No, they were. They, we were. I think the room was even quieter in game four, to your point, Will. But I think it was, I want to say it was three to two in the seventh inning. Yeah. And and, I, and, I, and Fry hit a two-run homer for, for Cleveland. Very tense series. I didn't expect my October to be centering around watching the Guardians <laughs> and Tigers. That's not, what, not how I expected to spend my month, but I was. Well, you don't have to spend today watching this game as much as we love to to watch NFL. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it, but we'll mention it, right? So no Olave, no Shahi, because he's had he had knee surgery, right? No Taysom Hill. The Saints are missing their two best offensive linemen again who are hurt with a questionable offensive line. Think about the Saints offense last weekend, guys, okay, against Tampa Bay. It was 27 points in the second quarter. That was it. That included a punt return and three interceptions off a deflection that gave the Saints a short field to score. I'm not sure anyone scores this game. Yeah, Denver has an advantage, I think, offensively with better personnel, but they're not trying to score a lot, right? Like, they're trying to run the clock, play action pass. It's like the the UCLA offense. Yes, Kick field goals like Sean Payne's fine. Kick he's fine with punting. So to me, guys, it's it's under or pass in this game. Um, but to Will's point, to your point, like baseball is on, uh, other sports are on. You don't have to watch this. We got college games tonight, right? We got a BC yep. Virginia Tech on tonight. So yep. maybe you don't peek at the at, at the NFL game very much. I'll definitely be watching the baseball for sure. <laughs> but the but the good thing is because I'll be in the hotel in, in Bloomington, so I'll have. Football on the on the laptop and okay. baseball on baseball on TV. But yeah, I, I would I would play it the same way, Jeff. It, it would be under under or pass for me uh, as well. So so that's tonight. Really interesting game. Obviously, Super Bowl rematch yes. coming up coming up this week between the, uh, the the reigning champion Chiefs and the 49ers. Um, 
And that leads to uh, one of the Super 6 questions presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, one of those questions will be, of course, uh, which undefeated team will suffer its first defeat uh, in Week 7? Chiefs, Vikings, or neither uh, is the question. So I, I, I know you uh, you like the uh, the Chiefs here getting the, the getting the point and a half, don't you? Yes. Whatever I can find the Chiefs getting a point and a half, I'll tell you but, but more importantly, I think that a, a couple of things sort of play in the in the Chiefs' favor here. One is the the rest, right? We talk about this a lot. I, I know the Niners are off a Thursday night game, but Kansas City is off a bye. Andy Reid with rest, we know, is a genius off a of rest. But he also sort of low key has owned the 49ers. I'm pulling up right now. Uh, Mahomes is two and zero against them. Uh, he's thrown for nearly 400 yards over the two games. Uh, six touchdowns, one interception. He has played well, and that, that by the way doesn't include the playoff games in the Super Bowl. So that's four and zero, right? Like he he has played well against the 49ers. They know this defense really well. They do a great. They have a great plan to neutralize the pass rush each and every year. Give them now two weeks to prepare, um, and so. I just lean Kansas City here, guys. It's not my strongest play of the week, but the Niners um, just don't seem to be able to beat Kansas City, and the Chiefs always have a great plan for the Niners. They're off a bye. We don't need to read off a bye. is really good, and the Chiefs will get up for this game. They don't get up for every game. They'll get, they'll get up for this one, Will, so I would be Chiefs or, or, or pass for me in this one. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a lot of good points, and I'm sure a lot of people look at it the same way. I'm getting points with, with Mahomes. I'm getting read off of a bye, and the Chiefs have – Dominated this head to head, not just the Super Bowls. Remember when the 49ers traded for McCaffrey a couple of years ago? Uh, they played shortly after that. And I think the 49ers went up 10 0, and the Chiefs absolutely buried them from that point on. So I think this is a good revenge spot for San Francisco. I like the 49ers here. Um, I, I just think you look at these records. All right, the 49ers have three losses, the Chiefs have zero. You could easily flip that. The Chiefs have won a bunch of these coin flip games. Uh, the 49ers have just blown some really head scratching leads. No kicker against Arizona. You know, the uh, th that weird Ram game a, a month or so ago. And, I mean, if you look, they played in the Super Bowl, obviously. The line was two and a half. Now it's down to one, one and a half. I, and that was a neutral field. This is in San Francisco. San Francisco, to me, okay, no McCaffrey, but they're still about the same team. Meanwhile, uh, the Chiefs, no Rice, no Pacheco. Kelsey seems to be washed. I think the home field for advantage, uh, the home field for San Francisco, the revenge factor. Um, I mean, you go back and watch that Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> I had the Chiefs. I got so lucky. It, it, it took about eight different things to all hit Kansas City for that game not to be won by the 49ers. That was a lucky win. I think the 49ers finally get it done here, John. Yeah, you're bringing up old wounds there, Will. We needed, the, we needed the Niners so big in that game. Everybody bet the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Using the logic that we're talking about right now, Mahomes getting points. Everybody bet it. Niners should have won the game. They blow it. Mm. I agree with you, though. It looks a little cheap here. Minus one and a half in San Francisco. No McCaffrey, but Kansas City's got all those guys out, like you mentioned. I, I would lean to the 49ers here as well. I, I don't think I'm going to use this game at all, but I, I would lean to San Francisco. I think we'll need San Francisco. I think the book will end up needing the 49ers. I, I think the public is going to be more inclined to bet on Kansas City. Yeah. And we'll see how the 49ers blow this one for us, guys. Because <laughs> they've, they've blown the Super Bowl to this team twice in the last five years. In my opinion, they should have won both those games. The double digit they lead going to Miami. Won yep. this year. Up 10 with the ball, too, Bear, <laughs> in the fourth quarter. Yeah. No, that sucks. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> Je Jeff sounds heartbroken. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was curious if you were if you were going to say, John, that you think you might need the Chiefs in this game because it, it feels like, yeah, for what we're talking about, Chiefs getting points and and no McCaffrey. I think a lot of people are just forgetting about all the issues that the Chiefs have on their offense right now. So I would, uh, I could see myself using San Francisco even potentially in uh, last man standing uh, if that. I, I haven't seen the sheet yet. There was one other game that I was looking at, but. Uh, I'm assuming the Niners will probably be one and a half there. It's a possibility. You don't you don't end up having a big need in these games sometimes, Bear, because it's only a one point spread mm -hmm. where your bigger needs are usually on like the like the Buccaneers on Monday night, where the Ravens are a cheap favorite on the road. We'll need the Buccaneers big in that game. That's more of the kind of games where the house has these really big decisions. Whereas a game that's essentially a pick 'em even though it's going to be maybe the best bet game of the week, Kansas city and San Francisco, there's going to be so many bets both ways. I'd be surprised if it ended up being a big need for us. Lions. You think might be a big need this week. You're getting two and everyone saw the lines. 
I wanted them to score 50 points on Dallas so badly. I, I just want like the round robin of like Dallas Jets and Giants in a prime time window just to continue because watching those three teams is just really entertaining, fulfilling uh, quality football between Dallas and the, uh, the, two, the two teams from New York. But I really wanted the Lions to score 50. It was awesome what Dan Campbell did trying to get his offensive line uh, a touchdown after they, the screw job last year in Dallas. He tried three times. It was awesome. And I, <laughs> it just, it was, I was so mad that, 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 that the penalties just took off. But uh, Lions, best team in the NFC right now, John, or no? And uh, Vikings laying two and a half this week. Feels like Lions are probably going to be the side they come in on, no? I still would say San Francisco is the best team in the NFC, but I know Detroit is like right there with them. I keep underestimating Minnesota. Don't ask me. I've, I've underestimated Minnesota for weeks now. I I would go with Detroit here. I do think Detroit's better. I thought if, I thought that game on Sunday was a lot of fun, other than the fact that the book got crushed on that game. Lions minus three got up to minus three and a half. Easy winner for the. Did you guys, did you guys open up? Did you guys open up on Monday? We were you able to open up the doors yeah, and turn the lights on? We decided to open the house okay. up anyway, Chris. Yeah, we figured what the hell. Let's let's keep going. Well, well, we had all the parlays going to the bills, so we figured we had no choice but to open up, right? It's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we needed we needed Dallas big in that game. Although that was funny. It was funny seeing the Cowboys on Jerry Jones' birthday. <laughs> Just getting embarrassed like that. It, I I can't I can't pretend like I didn't enjoy that. Uh, I, I think we'll need I think we'll need Minnesota here in this game. But again, it's it's very similar to the we just talked about the Kansas City San Francisco game. Because it's essentially a pickup, and Minnesota is a one and a half point favor right now at the Super Book, there's gonna be money on both sides of this game. So I doubt it's going to end up being a big decision right. for us. Yeah, I, I just I just love because usually when I don't have a rooting interest in the game, when you and I know Will, you feel the same way. Like when you see those tweets out there, like uh, the blank and blank winning will be a great result for the sports book. I, it gives you something to root for. That <laughs> I want to root for the sports of course book. Of you do. Just, just to win that game. Of well, of course. Yeah, yeah. We all root for the sports books. The the one of question I, I think is is important here for this game, and and maybe why I stay away is. How the lines generate defense without Aiden Hutchinson, right? Like it, it's a. I think they're going to be in the grand scheme of things, they're going to be fine. But figuring it out against Minnesota's offense might not be the best time to do so. Like I, like I don't think the team's going to crumble without him. But now you might have to kind of pressure a little bit more than you want to. You might have to do different things to, to sort of. The secondary hit is not Donald. exactly great anyway. And, right. So like so I'm not. <clears throat> I, I just that's my only concern about the lines in this game is like defensively. You have to change what you do because you don't have that guy there, right? It, there's no way to – you can't just do a one-for-one one change, obviously. You can pick up the slack with everyone else, hopefully. You, you you just paid McNeil. He had a great game against Zach Martin. Like, you have some good players up front, but how do you fill that void, Will, without Hutchinson there might take me off of the Lions in this game? Because I agree with, with Johnson. I think the Lions are better than Minnesota. Minnesota keeps sort of proving that – they're better than maybe we think, even though they're playing really good football. But without Hutchinson there, I'm not sure I can wager on the Lions without sort of knowing what that defense will look like. I agree the Lions are better, but um, you're playing the game in Minnesota, and that's one of the home field advantages. Like, we see home field muted. It's not worth a three anymore. It's not even worth two, like one and a half, maybe 1.75 or you know something in that range. Um, but Minnesota, that place is loud. They're, that team is good, so those fans haven't had a lot of success. That It's going to be a tough environment to play in and i don't really want any part of fading that coaching staff that minnesota coaching staff off of a bye flores and uh and o'connell remember flores gave golf absolute hell absolute nightmares in that super bowl patriots rams uh in 2018 so can he figure out some ways to, to scheme up pressure on golf and uh you know make this competitive game i think detroit will be a very popular teaser leg um Life on the line, I, I probably pick Minnesota. And if Minnesota does win, but Bear, we talked about this a little bit last week. Right now, the odds to be the one seed at DraftKings, Minnesota's plus 145. It's if crazy. you look at their schedule, Jags, Rams, Titans, uh, Falcons coming up. Uh, they've got some some really winnable games. There, there's another, oh, Colts at home. Uh, that Those are the next four games. Jags, Colts, Titans, and Rams <laughs> uh, in, in some order. Meanwhile, Detroit, they play the first place schedule, so they still have, you know, San Francisco. I think they play uh, uh, Kansas City. I mean, uh, the, the 
Lions have a very tough schedule. Minnesota, you never say lock up a one seed this early in the season, but Minnesota has a chance to really pull away. If Minnesota wins this game, they're going to be odds on to be the one seed, which is just incredible to say. And obviously, what, what the hell was their price to be the last un- undefeated team as well? Oh. Amazing. Do you think there's any chance at all, Jeff, that the uh, the Lions either try and trade for Max Crosby or Malcontent Hassan Reddick? Uh, good question. Um, Reddick, no, because of the contract <clears throat> situation, right? Like he's going to want a new contract and Hutchinson's due for a new deal. Right? Right. So you're not right. going to want to pay both. Correct. thing with Crosby <clears throat> is I think you could maybe – the salary's locked in, obviously. He's already been paid again. And you could probably have more flexibility with trying to find a way to make that work long-term. Um, do the Raiders do it, though? The Raiders have to think to themselves, like, look, we're probably a long way off from winning again. But he's a core piece of our right. of our group. I would not trade Matt. If I was the Raiders, I wouldn't trade him. He, he might want to be traded. He might say, like, guys, I want to be out of here. I want to play for a winner. But he's a core guy you're going to have for eight more years. Right. And when you, bring, when you draft that quarterback next season – and you rebuild that roster, you're going to want to keep guys like like, like Max Crosby. The Hassan Reddick thing is interesting because, again, whoever trades for him either has to offer him an, a, sort of an upgraded one-year deal, which he turned down from the right. Jets, or give him a long-term contract that he hasn't played in so long. I'm, like, I'm not sure teams are willing to give him that long-term contract unless he, he steps in, in, in the building. So I think the Lions are just have to figure it out with the players they have. And again... It comes down to do you have to bring extra pressure now? If you bring pressure, that means your secondary is on is one on one more often, right? More opportunity for big plays to be had against you. So a lot of have to figure out how to play without Hutchinson. It, it sucks. It's, it's a terrible part of the game, but uh, that is what they have to figure out right now. Who who, who had the NFC North as the best division in football at this point in this year? Ooh, nobody. Yeah, yeah, P- Packers now uh, look really really good. Yes. A very easy win against the the Cardinals last week. Uh, fortunately, right about that one. Two and a half, three point favorite over the Texans, who uh, Nico Collins obviously out didn't matter against the Patriots. Uh, two and a half, 47. This feels like it could potentially be uh, one of the higher scoring, more entertaining games of the week. Uh, I would lean over. I hate betting over, but that would be the play that I would make here. Uh, again, this feels like a pretty good two way action type of game, John, doesn't it? This is a sneaky great game in the morning on Sunday, you know, we, we opened this game, green Bay minus three, even money. We did take some money on Houston right now. We're at two and a half minus minus one sixteen. You know, remember with us booking all these NFL games at minus one Oh eight, we're usually moving the juice around, especially these mm-hmm. games around three, we're going to be moving the juice around. But in this case, we did go from three to two and a half on the Packers. Houston's quietly five and one. And I, I think green Bay looks like they're rounding into shape to where they could be part of that conversation of who the best team in the NFC is soon. Like, like yeah, this could be a super. Ripped. This could be the Super Bowl, and and no one would be surprised. I don't think so. I mean, we. I, I think I'd be Green pretty. Bay I'd be pretty surprised if it's the Super Bowl. Keep an eye on the NFC. I really do. I, I think that they. I love Lafleur. I love Love. I like uh, Jordan Love, the quarterback. That that team destroyed Arizona on Sunday morning. In another game, allow me to complain again, Joe. Please do. That was another game that was very bad for the sports books. I'm sure that breaks your hearts. Everybody bet Green Bay. Nah. They just steamrolled the Cardinals. I don't think that's going to happen this week, though. I think Houston's too good. I think Houston's too well coached, and they've got a superstar quarterback of their own. They do. CJ Stroud. I mean, this is an awesome game. Two great young quarterbacks. Jeff would be surprised if this was a Super Bowl, though. I, 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 yeah, that was a very stern rebuttal from my. You would, you would, you would be, you wouldn't be surprised if it was Green Bay versus Houston. Would I be? I would. Okay, I mean, I'll rephrase. I would not be shocked. <laughs> oh, sure. Would, 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 I, would I? Would I? Would it be? Would it be a little surprising? Yeah, but but I think both of these teams yeah. are re- like like again I, again. I know everyone's yeah. just hand, I know you're just handing the AFC over to the Chiefs no, again. I think Buffalo and Green that they're going to get that they're going to get back there again. And I think I think I think Baltimore and 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 uh, and, and right. Buffalo are really good. I just Houston offensively though has not been the same team this season. Uh, there's something missing from that team. They're they're 17th in efficiency right now, and there's just something you know. They've, injuries have, have played a certain role, but the offense is not as crisp as it was last season. That does worry me going on the road to Green Bay, where I think the Packers can score on the Texans defense. Mm-hmm. And if if the Texans sort of have to play a you know a game that they a game plan they don't want to to play on the road, I'm concerned about. It. They're sort of itching for a loss here, like they, they're itching for a, a road 
loss where Stroud doesn't play as well. We know he doesn't play as well on the road. More turnovers this season, guys. So I have nothing really. I haven't played this game yet, but I think Green Bay is really good. I think they're a better overall team right now than Houston is. Yeah, it'd be Green Bay or nothing for me. Remember now, we're, we're starting to get to the point. Uh, Barry, you know this. The East Coast is a little chilly. You, you're dealing yes. with some weather maybe. You know, wind. Uh, you're, you're talking about a dome team that's going outside. Not that you're going to make that your whole handicap. But uh, Green Bay kind of needs to get more, too, because if you look at Houston, I mean, they, they can pretty much coast in that division. They're not going to be threatened by Indy or Tennessee. or uh, Oh, I know Jacksonville's really good. Maybe Jacksonville <laughs> can, uh, can make a run. Sch- but, schedule's going to lighten up for the Jags now. I'm telling you. they can, Yeah, exactly. Can you at least then, leave them in London? Better. Leave both those teams in London. Check. Exactly. And meanwhile, like if you're the Packers, a third loss, man, in that NFC, like we talk about Minnesota doesn't have any Detroit's got one. The bears are playing well. Like if you have a third loss, you're going to be digging out of a hole. And uh, at some point you, that division is going to be out of reach. So I think green Bay needs it more. I think green, green Bay is slightly better. Uh, if I get a two and a half, I'll probably bet the Packers here. It, it, it's funny. Well, because like before the year, like in the, even the last couple of years, you kind of look for like, who is this r- ridiculous NFC team that can make a wild card with the, uh, with, with, with an eight and nine record or a nine and eight record and not have 10 wins. And it might take 10 wins in the NFC this year, because there are a lot of teams that are off uh, to a really good start. And, and one of them is a team that uh, I wasn't super high on this year. I actually played an alt win uh, under on them. And, and that ticket is going to be garbage, uh, Tampa Bay uh, hosting the Ravens in one of the two uh, Monday night games this week. Uh, Baltimore did just did just enough against Washington. Like the like the the the, the Commanders were in that game, and, and and now you go to to Tampa on Monday night, uh, three and a half, forty nine and a half. Another high scoring game is uh, in, in the making here. I, I, I have not been able to read Tampa well uh, this year or last year for that matter. I am going to completely pass on this game, John. Uh, what, do you, what do you see in here? Well, you know, Tampa's win a couple of weeks ago against Philadelphia looks a lot less impressive to me after watching the – unfortunately, I watched the entire Eagles-Browns game uh, on I Sunday watched too much of it as well I, for same reason. <laughs> I had the Eagles in a, in a big survivor contest here in uh, Nevada. Horrible, horrible three-hour experience for me. I hated every every second of it. I was really impressed with Washington last week, guys. I thought Baltimore was going to blow out Washington, and they got up by two touchdowns, and Washington just kept battling back. I was really impressed with the commanders. I still think Baltimore is the best team in the NFL. We opened this game at four and a half. Right away, we took money from, from sharp players on the Bucks got us down to three and a half, but we're going to need the Buccaneers on Monday because your parlays from this weekend are going to go to Baltimore, Baltimore money line, Baltimore minus the points. I think Tampa will be a big need for us on Monday. Hopefully we don't have quite as many favorites win on Sunday as we did last week. I don't think that's even possible mathematically to have that many favorites win again, but if we have a ton of favorites win again this Sunday, we'll need the Bucks big on Monday night for sure. I like over 49. Uh, I think you can't re- you, you can't run the ball on Baltimore. That means the ball's going to be in the air, which is good for overs because either you're getting big plays through the passing game or you're getting incompletions, which stops the clock. Meanwhile, Tampa, you know, they can move the ball. Baltimore's going to get their, you know, 27 plus points against pretty much anyone. On uh, boy, what, what a strange game. What a strange score that was last week. If you just took your eye off Saints Bucks, I mean, <laughs> Bucks are up what 17 nothing. Yep. You blink and against a backup quarterback, it's 20 to 17 Saints and then the Bucks end up with 50 points. Points. Just a, a very that, that was one of the more bizarre games, one of the more bizarre scores of the year. But I could see this uh, being an over game here, Jeff. Um, did you guys know that Lamar Jackson is twenty two and one against the NFC now? Which is twenty three and one. Wow, tw- tw- 20, 20, 21 and one. Um, so they just need but, to get to the Super Bowl one of these days, yes, actually, and then yeah. it, it'll be a lock. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't always cover these games. Um, it depends what number you got last week. Uh, you know if he covered or not. I would. I would lead Tampa Bay here. Uh, I think to John's point. Everyone's going to be on Baltimore on Monday night. I get three and a half right now. Tampa Bay is a good football team. They're a playoff team. They're probably going to win the division. Um, they're coming off a big win. I, I, I get that. But it wasn't a win where they played their best, right? There were three interceptions, Will, in that second quarter that led to all those Saints points and a, and a punt return that you have. So even scoring 51 points, there's plenty to look at as an offensive defense heading into this game and thinking to ourselves, we have to improve how we played in certain aspects of the game. So I don't think there's a letdown situation for Tampa here. I, I would lean toward Tampa Bay plus the three and a half, not my strongest play, but I have a feeling that all the worst people 
that we follow who give out wagers are going to be in Tampa Bay Monday night. So I'll probably have, I'll probably have the Bucks. <laughs> John, are we going to get get back to six? Do you think in that game in London between New England and Jacksonville? Oh. I, 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 I was planning to pretend that that game wasn't happening. Uh, that was my game plan for this week, Bear, <laughs> because I I have partners that have been talking about using Jacksonville and Survivor. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there's also been there, done that sport. There's a sport returning this weekend. You might know English Premier League football, and that's going to be back on Sunday morning. So I was hoping to just black out the Jacksonville New England game. I think I I don't even know how their people are going to bet that game. How could you possibly bet on New England right now? I don't I don't know how that people are going to bet that game. I feel we're not sending our best and brightest over there, guys. <laughs> Jaguars and Patriots. We are not sending the best. No, just leave them. Just leave over. them both there. What a horrible game! I, I I can't I can't acknowledge that game. Does it hurt your handle when these teams stink like this? Does it does it hurt the business a little bit? I don't really think that the London games are good for business. I, I think I think it's too early on the West Coast. Yeah, uh, honestly, and and when the game is this bad, yeah, it it does it does hurt it does hurt handle. We actually did decent money on on Chicago Jacksonville last Sunday, and we won it. We won a peanut on that game, but I don't I don't like having the two Monday night games is really good for business. But having another game that starts at 6.30 in the morning and it's Jacksonville and some other dreck, that is not really something that's going to move the needle too much uh, from what I've seen. What, Maybe the books on the East Coast would have a different take yeah. on that game starting at 9.30. That's a big difference, as you guys know. I, I always forget and like miss the first 15 minutes of the games. I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, wait, wait, there, there, there's an NFL game on right now. Um <laughs> What's the Parcells line? Like you are what your record says you are, right? And I feel like Jacksonville guys, for all these years, we keep, we keep thinking to ourselves like, well, they have good players. They supposedly have a good quarterback and they lose every football game. They're not a good football team. They're, they're one in five for a reason. If you want to put your money on them, that, that's a you problem. Like, go ahead and do that. But I think we have to stop believing that Jacksonville is going to turn this around, that they're going to become quote, quote, good again. They have mostly been bad for almost a calendar year now. They don't win football games. For whatever reason, there's many reasons for that, but they don't win football. And Trevor Lawrence, guys, is not what people thought he was going to be. He's just not. And maybe they bring a new coach in eventually and we get some better form of him, but he doesn't elevate everyone around him. Now, the drops are certainly a problem. There's other issues on this team too, but when it comes down to it, they're not a good football team. Now, New England's not good either. Drake may, I believe, had MRI on his knee this week, so I just would stay away from this game. But I'm one of those people that I think thought like, oh, Jacksonville will turn it around eventually. Barrett, they're just not going to. They're not a good football team. No, they, they, and as John said, the biggest football game of, of the week in London takes place about 10 miles south of Wembley at Stamford Bridge when Liverpool goes to Chelsea yeah. on, on, on Sunday morning. What's the wager to make then? You're just going to give them a game with no wager? Uh, I have Barrett to Barrett likes the under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, it, it, it's touch. <laughs> see, Liverpool have been an under team this year, uh, yeah. with, with Arne Slot coming in and kind of changing the tactics around a little bit. Uh, they have been very, they've been a lot more uh, defensive minded, not as pressing. But but Chelsea are Chelsea matches are hard to bet because they are so schizo. They they're just like the they're players that don't fit together. They've been a little bit better this year. Game, games like this worry me because the Ch Chelsea just continually uh, come at you. Like I, I, I wouldn't feel great about about a uh, in, an under two and a half in this game. This might be a a double chance uh, Liverpool or draw um, that, that might wind up being the play on Sunday. But I, I don't want my my heart getting in the way of my uh, my head. But yes, I, I will be absolutely watching uh, Liverpool Chelsea as opposed to that. Awful, awful American football, American football game. A real sport is back, which is finally good to. <laughs> so good. It is. It is. We and anyway, we we got a chance this year. Wolves, Wolves hosting City early in the match early on the day on uh, Sunday as well. I'd love to see the love to see Wolverhampton. I don't know what that he, means. Uh, Man, Man City is one of the, the favorites perennially yeah. in the in the EPL. They they go to Wolverhampton, mm. and typically when one of the when one of the better teams in the league go on the road, you would love for the home team to either uh, pull pull an outright upset or at least a draw, so the the better team drops points and it helps your potential standing. Look at, now I'm a soccer expert. You should be a soccer expert. Yes. 
We just want Manchester City to lose. Thank you. That's, that's yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Manchester that. City is playing. We want the other team to win. There you go. Okay. D- done. Now I understand it better. Who do you want to win in Seahawks Falcons? I think I want points to win. I think there'll be a lot of points in this game. Guys, Geno Smith is really good in a dome. I'm looking at his numbers right now. Uh, he completes nearly 10% more passes in, in domes. And this is nine, nine games now. 17 touchdowns, three interceptions. His quarterback rating is through the roof in a dome. Yards per attempt up. Like, everything up, up, up in a dome. They're obviously in a lane in this game. Um, I, I think we get points in this game, right? Falcons off uh, off a bye. Um, I would lean toward points, Will. It's a very high total. Um, no, sorry, the Falcons aren't off a bye. They, well, they, 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 That's they, mean. They played the Panthers, so it is kind of Yeah, it, it is off a bye. 38 points against Carolina. Um, I uh, I would take the over in this game. A uh, high total, I get it, but I think both teams score a lot of points. I don't know what to make of Atlanta because the record is better than you think, but, man, they lost the game. They, uh, they won a game they probably should have lost to Tampa. They won a game they probably should have lost to Philly. Uh, I, I think these teams are relatively equal. I, I would just, you know, when in doubt, take the points here. I don't think home field is worth, worth the full three, and I, I think these teams are basically on the same level here, John. So uh, when in doubt, take the three. Not sure if it's a game I'd bet. If I, I would love if somebody popped the three and a half. I'd be all over it. But at three, just uh, I'll lean here to, uh, to the dog. We got moved up from Atlanta two and a half twenty, which is where we opened the game on Sunday night, up to minus three even. Some money coming in on Atlanta. Yes, not a lot. Not a lot for a total. There's not. There's not a lot of action right there. Yeah, I, I got. I got nothing here on on, on this game as well as again, uh, two teams that you probably think are going to put up a. Uh, a bunch of what you know, you know these, these games are good. Seahawks Falcons games, the action there will be when I get one of those like anytime touchdown score or parlay boost from DraftKings on Sundays. Like that, that, that you you will have you will definitely have a player um, in, in Seahawks Falcons in, in that in that because it, it should be a high scoring game. It, it, the problem is with the Falcons, you just have to guess who it's going to be. Is it going to be Bijan? Is it going to be Algier? Is it going to is it going to be Mooney is is it going to be Drake London? Lots of lots of options there. Game finally, where well, there probably will not be lots of touchdowns. Jets at Steelers <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> Steelers, a two and a half point home dog now against the Jets. I'm going to be four. G- 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 b- b- uh, um, Steelers. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know what I put as my best bet right now. So, well, well, I shouldn't say that because your best bet is good. I think my best bet is good. I like it. Is your why? Best bet? Well, I don't know because I don't know what the Steelers are doing at quarterback. Correct. How the hell could you start Russell Wilson? Uh, maybe he has pictures of ownership or something. Something some like, I, 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 like, like Justin, Justin Fields is in my pictures, Jeff. <laughs> uh, something I don't know. Like what, I mean, I know he's. Not fantastic, but what has Justin Fields like done Makes wrong? No like, like Russell Wilson's terrible. Yeah, so I don't get this other than they maybe <clears throat> had to promise him he'd be the starter when healthy, and they're just honoring that because that's just what the Steelers might do internally. Uh, Fields has not been great, but he also hasn't been bad. That's important. He has not been bad, right? He's not turned the ball over. He has run the offense as prescribed. And the most important difference, I think, between Fields and Wilson is the ability for Fields to get out of bad situations. This offensive line is not good right now for many reasons, right? It, uh, just mostly injury. They're hurt. They're, in, they're injury, right? And even the guys that are playing, like, aren't supposed to be good. They aren't terribly good right now. And now you have a Jets defense that we know is good, even though they got worse without Salah. Are they no good? Surprise. Are they good? Well, I, I actually think they're, I think the Salah firing made them worse, but we'll get into that in a second. So Russell Wilson, to me, like... I love the Steelers getting points at home almost any time, but what is his offense going to be with Wilson? He's not pra- he practiced with his guys in, in the preseason, played a couple preseason games, but he hasn't worked with Pickens in forever. Hasn't worked with with Firemuth in forever. Hasn't worked with his offensive line in forever. Now they're throwing him in to a game against a Jets team that sort of desperately has to win this game, guys. I oh geez, I'm this game won't see any of my money. Will I'll tell you that. Bear, this is where the New York Jets rise up and turn it around. I actually like yep. the Jets here. I'm going down with Do the you ship. really can't afford to go two and five. Oh. Adams is going to help. I know he's not the Adams of a few years ago, but there's the familiarity there. That's another weapon. As 
as dysfunctional as it seems for the Jets, they're, they're not that far off from being a pretty good team. If they make a kick against Denver, if the ball bounces that right uh, their way against Buffalo, they're not that far off. I thought Rodgers actually looked pretty good last week. If you want to take the positive and this offensive line for Pittsburgh, um, you know, they're missing the center the guard. These are good players. Tackle. I'm not an <laughs> offensive line expert like Jeff is, but Jeff will tell you, these guys are good players. Yeah. Uh, the jets can get pressure. And if you're going to play Wilson, I, I honestly got it. You know how they have these, you know, fake Twitter troll accounts where they make up news and they get people to bite. When I saw Wilson was starting, I actually thought it was one. So of did those. I. I thought somebody's trying to pull fat. This makes <laughs> no sense to me. Fields has been adequate. He's been serviceable. And I'm not a big fields fan, but he's run around. He's done some stuff. Uh, Wilson's going to be a sitting duck back there. I actually think this is a good matchup for the Jets. I'm not in love with laying two and a half. It'd be more from a betting standpoint, like, uh, you know, a cheap money line. But I, I do think this is a good matchup. And I do think the Jets win and give Bear a little more hope here before they eventually, you know, kick hope. him uh, kick him below the belt at some <laughs> point this season. One thing's for certain, John, the Jets will always kick below the belt. Hope is a well, dangerous you know, thing. I, I, I agree with the line move in this game, guys. The line has moved towards the Jets, and I think it's because Russell Wilson is supposed to be the quarterback for the Steelers for reasons that are unclear. And the Jets, uh, the Jets should have beat Buffalo on Monday night. They should have won that game. And look at the look at the Steelers. They played on Sunday night a couple of weeks ago. They lost at home to Dallas. What do you guys think of Dallas right now after Good what point. you watched on Sunday against the skill the skill line mean, from Scott Van Pelt? Really Poop town. That that that's a really bad loss. So I, I understand why the money is is coming in on New York. I think I agree with Will. I think the Jets are going to win this game, but the Jets always find ways to lose. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like the Steelers, other than the Dallas game I just mentioned, they have found ways to win a lot of these close games. So maybe not. I, I like I, I like New York here. I think that they'll. I think as, as, if Russell Wilson the quarter, I, I give me the Jets. Like, like that, that. See, I'm I'm happy about Russell Wilson. I want him to play because uh, Will. I know we got a bunch of season oh, yes. totals under uh, for Unruh, and we just need those gain. The, need the, those bets triggered as action once he takes that snap and plays. The same thing. We want Christian McCaffrey to be healthy and come back and play. We want all those season unders to be triggered once he gets in the game and and, and has action. So we we want all these all these players to come back healthy and play. Where. It, and to show you how surprising it is that he's playing, you and I have these unders. I think I have under 18 and a half touchdowns. We were starting to sweat like, man, this is going to be a push. He's not going to play all year. <laughs> no reason to bench field. Right. They don't sudden They're four and two and they start them. But one of the more bizarre things I can remember if they start now, they haven't, I don't know. We're recording this Thursday morning. Yeah. They haven't officially committed to starting him, but I don't know why you'd float that out there that you might start him and then not. I don't know. It, it's a strange situation all the way around. It, it is. It, it was only like, I was with you for, I, I thought it was like a troll account. that, it, And then I'm like, is this just Tomlin floating this out there as like a trial balloon to see how it's going to go over and then be like, well, everybody thinks this is a really, really bad idea. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Kind of, like, I, I, I didn't get it at all. So, uh, but we, we, we'll see what happens. Like you said, it, it, it's Thursday right now and nothing is for certain. Uh, John, if you, you you got one pick for us to, from from the uh, from behind the counter this weekend, or we're still a little early for that. Uh, you want me to give an NFL pick? Yes, um, you, 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 reports have in the in the past that you've been pretty good at this uh, uh, one NFL game a week kind of deal. <laughs> Some, sometimes so, sources yeah. close uh, to Sammy know, I Pay. Haven't, I haven't got that far yet, and and say, you know, obviously, you guys know Sammy P. The schedule's all messed up this week because I'm going to the Shriners tomorrow, Bear. Oh, very so nice. Know. Yeah. So Sam thank you, thank are... you, Jeff Sherman, by the way, for sending me some of his uh his matchups. Which, by the way, those numbers moved uh, ridiculously after uh, yeah. he played in past. He, uh, he's all over that stuff. There's a lot of weather implications mm -hmm. at the Shriners at TPC Summerlin this week. Um, I, I I do think the Jets are going to beat the Steelers on Sunday night, but. I haven't really – I'm not quite there yet as far as what I'm going to give Sam tomorrow. There, there are a couple of things. I'm so I'm, – I'm one of those, like, really annoying people who only wants to talk about his survivor contests. That's okay. You know, I, 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 can, I would imagine why people would hate that person if they weren't in it. Like, who, like stop talking about it. Who cares? Uh, that would be annoying. That's really all I think about. Until I've solidified who I'm going to use. You 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 are right because um, we're in the same boat on that because yeah. we, we were talking bef beforehand. Like I'm in one that it started with 170 people or so, and we're down to three. It's me and two other people, 
And the wow. two other people that are left have both used Washington. And one of those two has used Buffalo. So I'm assuming that that person will use the Rams. And then the person who didn't use Buffalo. So it's like, I could, in theory, if I use Washington this week and the, and the commanders win, and then the Rams and the Bills lose, uh, it, it would be over. But I have a, I don't know. I, I'm, I got you know, you know that one of the that one of those games is going to be sweaty, whether it's the Rams, whether it's Washington, or whether it's Buffalo. But I, I think I'm ultimately going to land on Buffalo, only because it's three people left. And if Will Levis goes to Buffalo and Will wins, I mean, it's just what, what can you do, right? I don't know. I don't want to give away too much. No, about yeah. process. I the Does, Rams scare me a little. Bit. I. You know, it's not like the Rams have any home field advantage no. in L.A., but L.A. is a Raiders town. Yep. That'll be all Raiders fans at SoFi on Sunday. And they still have all those injuries. It's like. <sighs> uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, if I put a gun to my head, I think we'll probably end up using the Bills because I don't think that Levis is an NFL player. And no, Levis. That coach from no. Tennessee is in over it. No, I, I I agree. And then, and then there, of course, there's the uh, – the last band standing contest that's out there as well with the uh, the ATS survivor uh, for the for the locals, which is uh, the the group that I'm a part of. We're, we're still alive, and I haven't seen the sheet yet. So once once we see that, who, uh, is any of the four of us taking Browns plus five and a half this weekend? No, no, it's a lot. It's a lot I of points. Browns team total under has cashed every week. Did I see that? <laughs> they, they've gone under in all six of their games. I don't know yeah. if the team total has been under, but. I mean, <laughs> that's a survivor option, though, Jeff. The Bengals at Cleveland. Ooh. That is a what I, I keep. I keep thinking to myself, like, what if Deshaun Watson plays well, a or they just bench him in a game, like, like, like if he got hurt right. in the first quarter of this game, the Browns might win this game, right? Like, yeah. if Brissett, if not, if Winston comes in, I think this team <laughs> turns something like one eighty, right. like immediately. So that's the problem I think with betting against the Browns each week is like, what if this is the week that. Deshaun Watson can complete a third down pass. They went 26 straight third downs without getting a first down. You know how hard that is? Terrible. Like, not not he, one. Like He was like, go ahead. Watson was like 12 for 12 in the second half. On <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I watched the whole game. It yeah, I, I had Browns plus nine and a half, so I was glad to catch that okay, one. Yeah, yeah. But um, it was a, I mean, I don't, one good thing about using the Eagles in Survivor last week is that you can't use the Eagles again in Survivor. So you, you don't ever have to worry about having your Survivor life on the line and looking over at Nick Sirianni oh my and, God. and thinking, okay, I'm all in your hands right now, Coach Sirianni. Uh, I'm happy I'm happy we don't have Philadelphia anymore. I don't want to use them again. And Does, I don't want any part of that team. Sirianni, by the way, I mean, that, that guy is – He's itching to get fired. Itching yeah, to get yeah, fired. Yeah, he, he, yeah, depending on what happens the rest of the year, I would think that he's not back next year. I can, I, I can can't, be, I can't really imagine certain. that he would. I mean, some of the players get a little fed up with 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 him. Okay, I think I think it's not going to last very long. As soon as they start losing a little bit, maybe don't make the playoffs. Um, that division's still right there, though. Unless you I really know. think Washington, I don't. Win, you know, win their 10, 11 games and win the division. I mean, is Dallas winning the division. Some, no. Somebody's going to win the division. Maybe it is Washington. Yeah. They, Back to the Browns really quickly before we bid you all to do like as, as a Jets fan, I'm hoping that Kevin Stefanski might just privately be like, I can't play Deshaun Watson anymore. I can't take another. He's on the books. We're not going to be able to get rid of him. He's going to be our quarterback and maybe he can finagle a way out and, and, and work his way to to the, the, another real stable franchise with no drama and, and no dysfunction at all, uh, like, like the New York Jets next year, and be the uh, the Jets head coach. That, that's my that's my hope and dream, at least. Having he's certainly handling it better than I would handle it because he is taking the company line. He's yep. saying, "Hey, we're all behind Deshaun." I mean, he can't. If you gave him truth serum, there's no. He oh. knows too much about football. There's no I, way he actually believes like Watson's the solution. He he's uh boy, he's towing the company line though. He's never he, he's putting it all on his own shoulders. I'm surprised not that Watson continues to start because the management can sort of control that throughout the week. But the fact that he just hasn't gone at any point in these games, like screw this, go it like Winston, you're like, like, like go, like James go in the game. Like I'm tired of this. Like just get in the game. Like, and because there's been games that have been winnable 
<laughs> they could just move the ball. I'm so I'm so caught up in this. I can't even breathe. So I, I think like that to me is a surprising part. That during a game, yeah. it just hasn't been like go in Winston and make us make something happen for us. So but I five and a half though, does it matter at all that Joe Burrow is one and five against the Browns? He does not play well against this team. I mean, they have sort of the the Burrow crypt, I mean the, the kryptonite for whatever reason. I don't know why. There's no that, great reason for it. That, that, that's a, that game Sunday night was god awful as well. Oh, Bengals Giants. Oh, just just atrocious. And now the Giants are without their left tackle. Not good. Yeah, I don't know. I might have a little more on that coming up with the uh, in, in, in our best bet segment. But John, well, appreciate Thank you, you. Uh, John. I, I'm just rooting for the rooting for the Super Book. Rooting for a couple of underdogs this week for you. I appreciate that. I, I'm sure all the listeners out there are really worried about the sports books. How we do. And I, I know that everybody sympathizes with us after a week like last weekend. I'm sure every book in the country took it on the chin on Sunday. Those results were no bueno. I have a feeling that in the long run, you guys are going to be all right. Have a great weekend, guys. <laughs> Back from the group chat, Bear, um, where do we send donations to the sports book? Um, do, do we, is there a GoFundMe yeah, yeah, or like yeah, a, yeah, I was say, yeah, a go, plate go, do we pass around? Yeah, go go GoFundMe uh, at, at John Murray at Superbook. <laughs> and Jay Cornegay at Superbook. Yeah, yeah poor, poor old. Poor old the uh, Vegas sports books. Poor old sports books. Yeah, I just don't know how if they're going to be able to to open up anymore. Yeah, I was planning on going out there. I guess I can't anymore. Right, it's going to close up and and close up shop. Well, no, they need they need you now. They, they need they need, oh, they need you need coming. Yeah, okay. yes. They All, right. Need. All right. Well, what I need is my fade of the week to hit, which I I think I did last week, but uh, we'll we'll try again here. But I'm going with Thursday night football. I'm going right now. Uh, Saints under 17 and a half points against the Broncos, who are the fourth best scoring defense. In the NFL, it's a short week for a rookie quarterback and Spencer Rattler to prepare for a defense. I, I know Sertan is out. I, I get that. But Bear, look who's out for the Saints, Bear. <laughs> Their top she, two yep. wide receivers are out. Rashid got surgery. Olave got concussed. Taysom Hill's doubtful to play, which means he probably won't He probably won't play. The down offensive lineman, think about last week. That score's misleading. It was 51-27. The Saints scored 27 points in one quarter. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, including a punt return and off three short fields off tip pass interceptions. It's not going to happen tonight. <laughs> so I know how these Thursday game plans go. They're shorter. They're condensed. And they have a rookie quarterback doing it. I got to say, a Broncos team that's good on defense, Bear. I think it's tough to score the the uh, the ball tonight. Um, so I'll go under 17 and a half points for the Saints. Yeah, I, I, I like the fact that we got a best bet tonight. Well, for, you hit yours last week on Thursday night. You I were did. here to give it, but I, I, I gave know. it for you. Yeah, yeah, to catch you up. I'm sure Jeff caught you up as well. Yeah, I, my my had a um, the the car that I get transported down to because I leave right from JFK or El Guardi afterwards. The car battery died on 684. The bat, something died on, 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 from the car, and we got stuck on the side of the road for an hour and a half and had to wait for another vehicle to to come and, and get us and rescue us. Not really rescue, but we just kind of. Needed to leave the dead vehicle yeah. on the side of the road. So, uh, unfortunately, did not get down to New York in time for the uh, pod. But thank you, Jeff, for delivering the Niners uh, and, and my best bet that last week, which uh, was a runner, but much happier to be here. Yeah. Now to deliver it myself. And I'm glad you gave me the vibe that you gave me in the top of the show for my for my best bet because I took the Giants yeah. plus three uh, against the Eagles. Like the, the Giants are one of those teams that I thought they were going to be really bad at the start of the year. And look, their record isn't great right now, but, but I think they played, certainly I think their defense has played better uh, than their record indicated. They easily could have won that game on Sunday night against the Bengals. Now, look, I, I know they have quarterback problems. Uh, hopefully Malik Neighbors will play Sunday and that should help uh, the, the offense quite a bit. Uh, the offensive line certainly is not great, but the Eagles are just not good uh, right now. They, 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 they look like a team that is in a bit of turmoil and a little bit of disarray and they don't look like they're on the same page. And I don't know if it's because of... Uh, you you were kind of talking about like Nick Sirianni being fired and the coach being if then another coach you, you you hinted at some things there I, I will I will leave it at that um, and so we'll we'll see Giants getting three yeah, at home like again against an Eagles team that just still feels like they're they're spinning their wheels uh, I, I will take that wish it was three and a half so I'd get a little bit more uh, bang for my buck just. Three, obviously, such yeah. a key number, but I do think the Giants have a uh, a good chance to win this game outright. Um, I like this wager a lot. The Giants are pesky, man. Like it's it's clear they're well coached. 
they don't have the talent to execute, right? And, and that's part of it. But the Eagles, I I think there's a lot of just Sirianni's not a good coach, and the team knows it. And it's hard when you have a coach like that who's so immature to just believe you're going to win each and every week because your coach doesn't prepare you the way they should. Um, and Jalen Hurts is holding the ball. I'm going to pull the number up because it, it's, I got it sent to me this morning. It's kind of insane. He's holding the ball, his time to throw. It's not the Eagles offensive line problem. 3.23 seconds um, um, is, it's just, he's holding the ball, man, for forever. And um, he's he's got to just be more comfortable in the offense. He's not, and so... I'm with you in the Giants here, plus three points. Divisional dog at home. I like it. The best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, I should say, by the way. Did not properly uh, yeah. attribute well, my, my best bet of the week. To well, my best bet is my DraftKings Sportsbook. Thank you. Is the Commanders over 30 and a half points hosting the Carolina Panthers. Mm -mm -mm. Carolina's allowed 36 mm -mm -mm. points on average the last three games. It was 34, 36, I'm, I'm, 38. I'm just humming the old, the old, the old hogs oh, hail to the Redskins. I, I get it. Go ahead. You can, you can hum the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, Washington's offense averaging mm -hmm. nearly 30 points a game. Mm -hmm. They're off. A, they're off playing a, a really good Baltimore defense, and and the, they they held their own, man. That was a, a back and forth game. They did. Uh, I think the Commanders just score a bunch of points now playing a defense in in uh, Carolina. They're just just not good. They're not good defense, and I think they they run the ball well. They pass the ball well. Uh, over thirty half points for the Washington Commanders. Should, should I be worried about maybe using them for Survivor? I, you're, 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 you are you're, worried you're, about that, but I I mean Carolina. They did the Dalton thing. It worked for one game. They've been blown out every game since. Bear has not. Now the NFL will tell you that this would be the game the Panthers play close, right? And it's, it, you we know, think it's, it's going to be a high scoring game, I so it kind of leaves a lot of. Yeah, but the Panthers aren't keeping up though with the teams. <laughs> that's the, that's the issue, right? They're scoring. You know, they're tw they scored twenty points last week, but Atlanta scored thirty eight. Uh, they got blown up by the by, by the, the the Bears at, on the road. I think the Panthers are sort of dead in the water right now. So. Um, yeah, I would. It's up to you. I mean, man, com good commanders or anti Will Levis? That, 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 that's the decision I have to. I would take Buffalo. Buffalo. Buffalo's not losing. It Buffalo see. tends to blow out bad football teams, right? Yeah, I think mean, people might get because it's Buffalo when they're better and potentially a short week. Like, yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm going to go Bills. I think. I'm gonna, in, and by the way, we talked about the Devontae Adams trade to the Jets. The Amari Cooper trade awesome to, Buffalo. to Buffalo, I think, is a bigger deal yes, absolutely. than than Devontae Adams. Yeah, it's a big it's a, they need something they need something. They, they need something wide receiver for um the question I have is like, are the Chiefs gonna just sit this one out? <laughs> and are they gonna trade for like Hopkins? Curious. Yeah. We'll see. And they, they they could probably use someone. Yeah, you think? <laughs> and they got the Super Bowl with what they had last year. Yeah. Pretty, pretty 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 amazing. So Think, think, think we emptied the, uh, we did it. They think we emptied it all for this week. Um, appreciate everybody for, uh, watching on the YouTube channel. You get to see our lovely, uh, balloons and hundredth episode. Thanks again for following and downloading on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, make sure you rate, review, subscribe. You know where to find us all week. Wednesday, college football pod, Thursday, NFL pod, Friday, Bruce and the bear. We got the, the, the Bear Study Hall guide throughout the week. Uh, looking forward to a big new kickoff on Saturday. NFL picks, college picks from Jeff and myself. For Jeff, for Will, for John, for Sammy from yesterday. Why, why not? Sammy P, we love you. Remember, less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs> <laughs>